Hello and welcome to Washington Exec's video series. I'm Amanda Ziede with Washington Exec and with me today is Todd Stiefler, Director of Logistics Transformation at LMI. Thanks so much for joining me today, Todd. Yeah, thanks so much for having me, Amanda. I appreciate it. Of course. So I wanted to start by asking if you can give us some background on the Logistics Transformation Organization. What, when was this unit uh, stood up and why? Yeah, absolutely. So uh, it's really a new organization inside LMI. We stood up the team uh, really at the beginning of 2022. And we we did it because we saw a couple of challenges that, that we, we wanted to respond to. One was one was external. Really, our, our customers were seeing opportunities in in digital technology and in leveraging their data to drive logistics outcomes. But they were, in a lot of cases, really overwhelmed by all the options out there not sure where to start, not sure how to realize value in a timeline that, that made it worthwhile for them. And as a result, a lot of times they were stuck. And so we wanted to figure out a way to, to help them, uh, help them take those steps and leverage the data and the technology assets that they, that they have at their disposal. Um, and the second problem was kind of an internal challenge for us, which was, you know, we've got a, a 2000 plus person, you know, 60 plus year uh, established a consulting firm doing incredible work for customers that depend on us every day. And at the same time, we're trying to create new digital solutions and new technology enabled services to advance our customers' missions. And for, for a lot of our, our leaders, it was really hard to balance those two responsibilities and move as quickly as we wanted to move uh, to, to bring new solutions to bear. And so what we decided to do ultimately was create a team that was dedicated to developing those digitally enabled and technology enabled logistics solutions to commercializing them. And um, the results have really uh, have really exceeded our expectations, even in just a couple of months that we've been uh, that we've been out. So so my team is really just just laser focused on how do we leverage technology, uh, LMI's logistics heritage to deliver solutions to customers uh, quickly and, and put them in the hands of users. Yeah, and as you alluded to, I understand that the logistics transformation team is developing a suite of applications called LogSmart. Can you tell us a bit more about that? Yeah, absolutely. So LogSmart sort of a, a brand name or an umbrella, uh, an umbrella label that we apply to a suite of applications that are focused on um, delivering logistics outcomes for customers. We're going to be rolling out a number of, of LogSmart applications in the coming months. I'll talk about two quickly that are actually already in use by customers today. Uh, one is called LogSmart Fleet. So think about that as sort of a predictive and proactive uh, maintenance application for customers who are operating large and complex fleets of either mobile or fixed assets. So helping them get insight into the availability of those assets, the management of those assets, and the maintenance uh, of the assets. And then uh, LogSmart Supply is focused on helping customers use data, uh, predictive analytics, and, and modeling and simulation to improve the resiliency of their supply chains. And we're prototyping uh, that application with a couple of customers uh, in the DoD and Intel communities. Uh, we also have plans to, uh, in the next couple months, uh, bring out sort of minimum viable products of LogSmart applications that help program managers and acquisition uh, teams operate more efficiently across the government and uh, applications focused on depot and warehouse management. Those are just a few of the different use cases that we're, uh, we're rapidly developing applications around under that LogSmart umbrella. All right, very cool. So then how is LogSmart different from the Myriad software solutions out in the market today? Yeah, it's a great question. There, there's so much out there already, and, and at the level of sort of marketing taglines, a lot of it can sound similar. Where we wanted to position LogSmart applications was really sort of in our in our more traditional home base of being that trusted uh, that trusted advisor and trusted supplier for uh, for our customers, not just another uh, technology firm out there in the noise, and so. You know, I, I think what really makes LogSmart different or what makes LogSmart applications different, <clears throat> first of all, we, we understand the authoritative data that our customers have because we're serving them today and we're working with that data every day. We also understand their organizational context. So we don't have to bash our head against the wall trying to figure out 
where are the data elements that we need to deploy applications, who owns them, what can we use uh, for what purpose, et cetera. Um, secondly, we've really focused uh, and, and held ourselves to this standard of saying, if it's going to be a log smart application, it has to do more than just describe reality today for, for users and decision makers, or even predict reality in the future. We've got to be able to provide recommendations and prescriptions uh, you know, so that customers know which course of action is the right course of action based on the data. Um, you know, as a quick aside, I, I saw a demonstration from a, a supply chain risk management provider the other day where they were able to predict a, a ton of risks, dozens of risks in a, in a supply chain and, and sort of flash those up on the screen for a leader. But it was terrifying, right? I mean, it was great to see all that information, but I had no idea as a user what I should do with the information other than get really nervous. So we want to hold ourselves to the standard of going beyond just just describing or predicting reality and and, and uh, assigning the right action uh, to to the the user persona who's using our application. The the third sort of log smart principle we want to leverage available IT and data to 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 deliver these outcomes. So most of our customers have already invested a tremendous amount of money in whether they're big data and analytics environments like Advana in the Department of Defense or just um, you know, open source tools and, and other applications, things like uh, Python and R analytics libraries, Click and Tableau as business intelligence tools. We don't want to sell them another software license when they have the tools they need to get the job done. We want to help them configure those tools so that they actually deliver the insights that they need. Um, and I think that's a different model than what you see in a traditional software vendor, which is, which is not what LMI is. Um, and finally, we want to empower our customers' workforces uh, through LogSmart applications to, to do this job themselves, right? We don't want to say, if, if you uh, hire LMI to configure a LogSmart fleet to help you do better predictive fleet management, you've now got to have LMI uh, on contract into perpetuity. We want to build organic capacity uh, inside of our customers' organizations to operate these tools to extend upon them and, and frankly to kick us out if they feel like they can manage the solution themselves going forward that's a, a business model that we're totally willing to support and i think all of that sort of in totality sets us apart all right got it and todd i understand that you come from a background in both commercial software and government consulting so how does that experience kind of shape your approach to logsmart yeah no it's, a, it's an interesting question i, I think um i got to see as a as a commercial software product manager, um, you know use cases, uh, successful and unsuccessful use cases of you know companies trying to uh, try to implement digital transformation in the logistics sphere and in place you know international airlines, large equipment OEMs, oil and gas companies, uh, shipping and transportation companies, and and then you know, as you noted, um, U.S. and allied militaries, and uh, you know I got to see. I think what you know what set the successful apart from the unsuccessful from both a technology and, a, and an implementation perspective. I can I can talk about that uh, in more detail um, if, if you're interested. Um, but you know, two things that it really has made me focus on in this job is, is first of all, sort of setting up uh, you know product management rigor inside of our organization and, and really getting focused on user personas, which is not something that an organization with a large R&D base like ours has always done well. Sometimes we get really excited about what's cool or interesting and not as focused on who's going to use this, what is their job, and how does this tool or application make their job easier. Uh, and so we're really trying to focus there. Um, and then we're trying to focus really uh, on moving quickly and prioritizing user feedback. So let's not build something perfect and then hope it's right. Let's build something quickly uh, get together with our user communities and customers really, really early in that process and make sure that we we sort of develop something together. So I think that's that's the good stuff that I've sort of taken away, the what I want to keep doing or, or bring to LMI from that commercial background. Um, but but by the same token, there are things that I, I saw us have to do when we interacted with the government as a commercial software company that I don't want to do at LMI. It's not LMI's culture and I wouldn't want it to be, which is, you know, sort of take your uh, take your standard one size fits all software solution uh, out of your briefcase and assume that it's going to work in any organization. You know, when I was working in, in 
the commercial software, you know, at the end of the day, I could listen to my customer, I could empathize with them. But at the end of the day, if I didn't sell the product that I was in charge of, I, I wasn't doing my job. You know, with LMI, we want to focus on technology and and uh, and, and data and analytics and software and, and using those powerful tools to make our customers' jobs easier, to make our customers more effective. But if the right place to start is with services or with a workshop or with using the tools that they've already got, then we are perfectly comfortable doing that because at the end of the day, we're not trying to make money selling software licenses. That's just not our not our model. And so so that's what makes me really happy to be at LMI and uh, where I think we can excel in delivering results in a way that, that sometimes the commercial software companies struggle to do. And kind of expanding off of, of those points that you just made, how does LMI help federal agencies adopt and implement the kinds of advanced capabilities that are within Locksmart? Sure. So, so, you know, I think we, because we've been working with many of our customers for, for decades, mm -hmm. in some cases, you know, 50 or 60 years, uh, you know, we understand their missions. We understand their constraints. We understand their data, their policies, even frankly, their politics inside the organization. And so we don't, waste months or years running into walls and, and wondering why, you know, hey, what we did at this Fortune 500 company should work here. Why isn't it working? Mm -hmm. um, so we, we really can focus on transformation uh, and, and, and driving the change that needs to happen in order for the you know, piece of technology or the solution that we're also bringing to bear to, to really uh, deliver its promised results. And so, uh, you know, as I was thinking about uh, about this the other day, you know, trans transformation is is just by and large a sort of cool sounding word for change. And everybody accepts that that change management is really, really important. And yet when people want to do digital transformation, they sometimes think they can just buy technology and the and the and the transformation will be self-executing or the change will be self-executing. And and that's not the case. So, you know, I think the reason that we're successful and will continue to be successful is because we focus on digital transformation holistically, uh, you know, with the best technology in the market uh, and with incredible data scientists and engineers and software developers, but also fantastic change management consultants and strategic communications teams, et cetera. So um, to close, I'd like to ask about something that we're all aware of. There are lots of supply chain challenges and unknowns currently um, how will the logistics transformation organization and Locksmart evolve with those changing needs? Yeah, it's it's it is amazing that uh, you know supply chain, as an example, has just gone from being this sort of esoteric concern of of you know a team here at LMI and like-minded experts uh, around the world to you know now sort of dinner table conversation with uh, with mom and dad. Um, you know, I don't see that energy dying down. It's incredible that the, the focus on supply chain and, and world events, unfortunately, are gonna make us continue to focus on them. So I think we're gonna stay really close to our customers and understand how their needs and their expectations are evolving. You know, what questions are they being forced to answer and, and what tools can we put in their hands to, to answer them more effectively and more efficiently? Uh, you know, as, as data continues to be exposed in, in enterprise data environments like Ivana, DOD, and, and uh, other customers enter on similar journeys. We think the opportunity to accelerate delivery of outcomes via this sort of you know, user-focused app model that we've, that we've wrapped under the LogSmart umbrella uh, is only, you know, that's only gonna, uh, that's only gonna accelerate as well. And so, uh, you know, we're gonna continue working with our customers to prototype new capabilities uh, we've set up an organization inside of LMI called The Forge, which is a rapid prototyping and development team. They've generated incredible results over the past really 18 months that they've been around. And now our, our job is to get more and more customers coming into The Forge, talking about their problems. Uh, you know, we can take, you know, seven or 14 or, you know, 30 days to prototype something, put it in their hands, say, would this, would this change your world? And, and when they say, yes, if you made the following changes, then we can go say, all right, let's, let's get started. Let's figure out how to develop this or uh, create a, an RFP to go, you know, bring in somebody else to go, to go develop it and put it in production. 
uh, but we, we want to keep that that really close relationship focused on the user, focused on the challenge, uh, and focused on rapidly showing them the art of the possible. I think that's how we're going to continue to evolve. Wonderful. Well, thanks so much, Todd, for helping us understand the logistics transformation organization, as well as the walk smart suite of applications a bit better and how it applies to customer missions. Appreciate you being here. Yeah, thanks so much for having me, Amanda. It was great. Of course.